The Real Master Brain Behind the Jack Daniel Brand Once upon a time, a 5 foot 2 inch man, commonly referred to as Jack at the time, walked around with a really small shoe, size 4. Six months before he died, rumors spread that he struck his foot against his safe after he forgot his combination key, which caused gangrene and the toe had to be removed. Afterwards, his entire foot was removed, then his entire leg. The complications from the infection had become so unbearable that he died thereafter. While Mr. Jack's death was quite the tragedy, he had managed to create a whiskey brand that is now known as Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels is the world's most popular whiskey brand, but until recently only a few people knew that Jack Daniels himself did not create the liquor alone. It was created by Nathan Nearest Green, an enslaved man who mentored Daniel. Nathan Nearest Green taught Jack Daniel the art of whiskey distillation and still went unacknowledged for more than 150 years. Researchers only recently discovered that the role enslaved people played in America's early whiskey making went beyond manual labor like gathering grain and building barrels. Distillation was notoriously laborious and tedious work, and some plantation owners, including George Washington and Andrew Jackson, employed enslaved workers to run their distilleries. Little is known about Green's early years beyond that he was born in Maryland in 1820, which is not entirely clear because it could mean he was born into bondage or he was enslaved later in life. What is clear is that by the mid-1800s, Green had gained fame as a skillful whiskey distiller in Lincoln County, Tennessee. His skill set was admired so much that his enslavers, the Landis and Green Company, often rented Green out to area farms and plantations that were eager to use his whiskey-making skills. It was in one of these instances that Green met young Jasper Jack Daniel and forged what would become an iconic partnership. Around 1850, Daniel, a seven-year-old orphan looking for work and escape from a tough family life, found his way to the property of Dan Call, a Lynchburg preacher, grocer, and distiller who had previously been credited with teaching Daniel how to distill whiskey. While working as a laborer on Call's farm, Daniel took an ardent interest in Call's distillery. Eventually, Call introduced him to Green, who he called the best whiskey maker that I know of. Call then instructed the enslaved man to teach the young boy his distilling magic. The seven-year-old white orphan, who was sent to the call farm to be a chore boy, eventually became Green's apprentice and was taught the Lincoln County process, which differentiates bourbon from Tennessee whiskey, making Nearest responsible for the Tennessee whiskey we know today. As Victoria E.D. Butler, Green's descendant and former employee of Jack Daniel's distillery noted, there would never have been Jack Daniels made without a Green on the property. Nathan Nearest Green taught Daniel sugar maple charcoal filtering. This method, which some historians believe was inspired by the techniques of enslaved men and women who had used charcoal to filter their water and purify their foods in West Africa, gave Green's whiskey a unique smoothness. The process is universally accepted as a critical step in the making of Tennessee whiskey. The method allows whiskey to be filtered through wooden charcoal chips before being placed in casks for aging. The process imparted a unique smoothness of flavor that set Jack Daniel's whiskey apart from its competitors. As years passed, Daniel continued to learn from Green, forging a friendship with his mentor, and eventually perfecting the Lincoln County process and selling his whiskey throughout Lynchburg and in surrounding towns. By the time the Civil War began, Daniel had developed into an adept salesman, peddling his smooth brand of Tennessee whiskey to soldiers and cementing his varietal as the most popular in the area. Once the war ended and emancipation came, Daniel bought Call's Distillery renaming it after himself. Shortly after, Daniel opened a larger distillery on a nearby plot of land and employed Green's three boys, Lewis, Eli, and George. 
their employment began a tradition of more than seven generations of the Green family working either for or with the Jack Daniels brand. Although much of the history is still a bit sketchy, the New York Times published a story about the distiller's hidden ingredient, described as help from a slave. In the article, the brand officially acknowledged that an enslaved man, nearest green, taught Jack Daniel how to make whiskey. The claim has since drawn the attention of scholars, researchers, and journalists descending upon Lynchburg, Tennessee, hoping to learn more about a man who had appeared as a mere appendage in the story of America's most popular whiskey brand. Did you know that Jack Daniel's famous old number no. seven whiskey is filtered through charcoal? Debbie Staples, a great-great-granddaughter of Green's who heard the story from her grandmother, said when asked if she knew about the Jack Daniels history, we've always known. He made the whiskey and he taught Jack Daniel and people didn't believe it. It's hurtful and I don't know the reason. However, people believe it now and in large part because Brown Foreman Corporation, the current owner of Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, has acknowledged the foundational role Green played in the brand's development. The truth of the matter is, Nearest Green was the first head distiller of Jack Daniels Whiskey, says Matt Blevins, global brand director for Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. We're very proud of this story and are very committed to amplifying it and acknowledging that. In the past, we did not amplify it the way that we could have in earlier eras, but we're about the future and moving forward. Blevins added, the best knowledge that we have is that they had a mentor and mentee sort of relationship, and I would say a friendship. The stories that have been passed down talk about the care that Jack Daniel took to always acknowledge the Green family. There are no known pictures of Green, but there is one of Daniel with Green's son George sitting next to Daniel, rather than being relegated to the back. Stephanie Benjamin, an assistant professor of tourism management at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, said of the picture, that photograph shows the respect that they had for one another and for their families. To be not only allowed in that photograph, but also positioned in the foreground and sitting right next to Jack Daniel himself. Green played an important role in the history of the brand and Jack Daniel too cannot be overlooked as he merely started out as a chore boy before his partnership with Green. The writer and entrepreneur named Fawn Weaver, who became fascinated by Green's unheralded contribution to the world's most popular whiskey, made extensive research, interviews with Green's descendants, and shared her documentation with the company. She noted, I was very pleasantly surprised when they embraced my research and updated their records to reflect that. I think it said a lot about the character of their company that they moved that quickly to course correct. Jack Daniels has incorporated Green's contributions into the official history of the brand, but Weaver went a step further, investing $1 million of her own money to establish Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey, which is now the fastest growing independent American whiskey brand in U.S. history. Weaver mentioned, Uncle Nearest is the most awarded American whiskey or bourbon of 2019, 2020, and 2021. And the fact that it is the bloodline of Nearest Green, blending and approving what goes into our bottles, is something I marvel at regularly. Victoria is an absolute natural when it comes to blending, and to watch her work is to see something pretty darn close to perfection. Ever since, more than seven generations of Nathan Nearest Green's family have worked at the Jack Daniel Distillery, a tradition that continues to this day, as Staples and two of her siblings still work with the firm. However, a little bit of contradiction arose when news spilled that the Green family did not benefit when the Daniel family sold the Jack Daniel Distillery to Brown Foreman for $20 million in 1956. Although the Green family were very well included in terms of finances back in the 1800s, they were not recognized as owners or co-owners of the Jack Daniel Distillery, which made those millions of dollars to be passed down through generations of the Daniels and not the Greens. Weaver's Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey joined forces with Jack Daniels to launch a program that provides support, expertise, and resources to African-American entrepreneurs entering the spirits industry. 
Debbie Staples is delighted that their great-great-grandfather is finally being recognized. It's kind of mind-boggling, and we are so proud. And to think that from here to Africa, that recipe goes all the way back. And to think that he played such an important role in establishing this company, it sometimes seems unreal. It really does. Due to Weaver's tenacity, Green's story, although left untold for more than a century, will not be lost to history. But that's not the case with so many other stories of black achievement and contributions to the nation. Jack Daniels Distillery is still the oldest registered distillery in the United States. And according to The Atlantic, Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey has remained the favorite drink of numerous celebrities like Frank Sinatra, Ava Gardner, and Jackie Gleason, amongst others. Do you enjoy it too? Like and share the video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the notifications bell for more exciting stories coming your way.